<laughs> Welcome to Chandwell. My name is Michael, and I think that after countless iterations and what seems like a hundred empty cereal boxes turned into mock-ups, I've finally settled on a design for Chandwell's station buildings. In this video, I'm going to show you the steps that I went through to get it into a place that I was happy with. I start any scratch build by looking at the space that I've got available. I have a long, narrow area of ground at the front of the layout and I'd already decided that I wanted the station buildings to be on this side rather than the back. There's a small area at the head of the platforms for me to model the back of the station's frontage. No ground is flat on Chandwell and the same is true in this area. The ground is going to rise from track level on the left, ascend through platform level and up to about 10mm above platform level at the right. The ground will continue to rise towards the back of the layout where I'm going to model a bridge and the effect that the two rear tracks and a siding used to run through the station to goods facilities beyond. And of course any design that I come up with needs to fit into this space and not look ridiculous. I always start my scratch builds with mock-ups, firstly made out of paper and then I move on to serial packet. I don't think I've ever done this many mock-ups for a single building though. My February update video showed that I needed a low building so to avoid blocking the station, so I concentrated on getting this element right first. I spent many an evening hour virtually touring hundreds of railway stations via Google Maps. I was struck by the wall at Bournemouth, the arches at Saltburn and Whitby, the variations of buildings at Skipton, the simplicity of Ilkley, the windows of Birmingham Moor Street, the grandeur of Newcastle, the symmetry of Bingley and the overall outline of Sheffield. But it was Darlington that really spoke to me on an emotional level. The clock tower at Darlington is magnificent. On the Engage forum, Dave pointed me to where I could find an architect's drawing of the tower. This was really helpful, so thank you Dave. Dave actually has a beautiful Engage railway on YouTube called Mossdale it's very relaxing to watch, so it's well worth a look and I've linked to his channel in the description of this video. Despite me loving the tower and relishing the challenge of building it in card, it only took a minute or two from printing the mock-up to realise that it was way too big. I checked it for scale and it was correct, but in situ in Chandwell it was just too out of proportion to look right. With a heavy heart, I decided to try other things. I developed a Sheffield Victoria obsession for a while. I started talking with Chris from the Richmond North Yorkshire YouTube channel and we spent a while exchanging ideas based on Victoria. I decided to make the first mock-up with this in mind and as usual I used Inkscape for this. I was still attached to Darlington though and its lovely portico which itself is nearly 10 metres high. I had to adjust the size and the positions of the windows and the arches to get it all to fit around my canopy. I tested several variations before building this mock-up. Despite the arches being a little bit low, I was happy with this. It had a bit of the Darlington frontage, a tower a bit like Sheffield Victoria, and then a few buildings decreasing in size. There was a bit of Bingley in there with a glazed canopy, and a few smaller buildings like the little ones at Sheffield. The more I looked at the mock-up in place on the layout, the more something niggled that it was wrong. I finally realised that I'd ruined the beautiful elegance of Darlington. I'd already made the windows a bit smaller, making them less in proportion to the wall itself, but I'd also moved them up to raise them above the rising ground level. The beauty of Darlington is that the bases of the arches of the windows are aligned with the bases of the large arches. Mine were all over the place and it would look awful when built. And I think that reducing Darlington to such a short length was also the wrong choice. I finally had to accept that the design of Darlington just wouldn't work in Chandwell. So I went back to Google Maps. I eventually found Chester. It's got an elegant frontage. It's two storeys, but it's easily adaptable to one. It has arched windows similar to Darlington at regular intervals with doors and arches of different types interspersed. Using the council's planning portal, I found a drawing of one of the windows and doors made in the late 1990s. Perfect. I brought it into Inkscape. It was an easy job using the rectangle and oval tool in Inkscape to make an exact scale representation of the windows and to get the spacing right. From there I could place it in the wall using a screenshot from Google to get the scales right. The more I looked, 
the Maher realised that the whole station front could be constructed from rectangles of a standard size. I drew these in Inkscape and then I could just arrange them like cards on a table until I found an arrangement that looked good. I tried several combinations and I printed a couple on flat card to see if I was on the right lines. Eventually I found an arrangement that I liked and which was similar to my original Darlington base design. And many thanks once again to Chris at Richmond for his constructive feedback on this stage. With his help I refined it a bit and I set to mocking it up. As a quick aside, go and have a look at Richmond. His station is beautiful. I've put a link to his channel in the description of this video. To create the mock-ups I just print an outline of my drawing onto budget copier paper. Using the actual Inkscape drawings that will become the finished buildings ensures that the dimensions are exactly right. I stick the sheets to empty cereal packets using a glue stick and smooth it out by hand. Once they are dry, and I'll leave about two hours for this, I score down the edges to make it easy to fold, cut the shape out and then fold and glue into position. It takes less than 10 minutes to get the whole station mocked up and I really like the final effect. We have the back of the front building in place. This wide arch here will lead to steps which themselves will lead to the front of the station and the road which by this point will be much higher than the platform level due to being built on a hill. The three wide arches will give way to a concourse. This would have been an old covered van yard like Nottingham Victoria and Sheffield Midland had. In 1990s Chandwell this will be empty and dingy, maybe containing a few parked cars. Who knows, in 20 or 30 years this might be a buzzing concourse with a Starbucks and a West Cornwall pasty company concession. The tower suits the dimensions of the buildings and it's in proportion to the rest of the station. I like the long building with repeating arches. I miss the smaller higgledy piggledy buildings in this exact layout but the beauty of a serial packet mock-up is that I can easily adjust it to re-add this element. In all, I think this is the best building I could have come up with for this part of the layout. It's taken me more than a month to get this far but they say I make mistakes early and often to get the best outcome. I've never created this many mock-ups of such varying designs for a building before but I think in the end it will all have been worth it. It was hard to give up on my Darlington plan but to do so was the right decision and I think that once I get going on this it will look spectacular. Even now the benefits of the mock-up are apparent. It seems I somehow mismeasured or at least misdrew this end of the front building which should meet the front of the building with the arches. I used this arch as a kind of open gateway into a small yard but now I see the proportions of it it looks daft so off with this and on again with one of the little buildings of my first design. I'll shorten the main building and then add the other little buildings from before and this will look great. This is my 49th Chandwell video, number 50 next. I have something a little bit different planned for that so keep your eyes out for it. Hopefully number 51 will be me showing some real progress on the station now that all this cereal packet has done its job. So until then, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.